just buy a real bike why don't you just get a real bike or stop buying these cheap chinese bikes guys i want to tell you the reasons why i keep buying chinese bikes over a real bike like a ktm or a yamaha or kawasaki or any of those hondas or any of those actual bikes but the reason that i buy these cheap chinese bikes there's multiple reasons but one of them is because one they're cheap they're they're affordable and i know that i can go to craigslist i know that a lot of you guys argue the argument of just go to craigslist you can buy a two thousand dollar bike that actually runs good but you have to remember dirt bike so it's not it's not really a hassle but yeah we're gonna go down this road this little windy fun road to ride down um it is freezing outside i'm not gonna lie to you guys it's like 30 something degrees out it's pretty cold i'm freezing my balls off but i'm out here making this video for you guys because i see it in the comments a lot and i just want to get it situated so that way those you guys that are actual real fans and you actually enjoy the content defend me a little bit in the comments when people when people say just go buy a real bike just go buy a, an actual bike stop dealing with these cheap chinese bikes i would love to get one of those bikes just not right now i am going to get a nice bike i, I want to get a ktm two stroke uh, maybe a 125 i don't know yet eventually i will get it i'm thinking next riding season i'm gonna have it by then but for now i'm probably gonna get it in the winter because winter is the best time to buy bikes just because everyone's done riding for the season uh, they want to get a new bike in the next season they're just getting rid of it they don't want a garage to keep it or something like that it's just it's just known to buy bikes in the winter because it's cheaper because people aren't actually out there riding it holy shit i didn't even notice my gopro was looking way too far down but yeah i mean there's no point in buying the for a beginner biker, I get it. If you're not a beginner biker, if you rode before to go buy one of those, these cheap Chinese bikes ain't shit compared to those bikes. But I'm a new rider. Like I, I just started riding this year. Um, I just started working on the bike and learning about it and stuff. And like I learned from you guys as well. Like there's a lot of comments that you guys comment, and you guys give some great suggestions. And it makes I actually take that and I use that and I keep that knowledge. So I'm learning as we go, just like you guys, but this channel right now is based around beginner riders, like people that want to try riding a dirt bike, that want to get into riding and stuff like that. People that first want to learn how, you don't know if you're going to be good on a dirt bike. You don't know if you have like the natural balance or the skill to be able to ride a bike. Now it's not hard, but then again, there's some people that grow up never riding a bike, like not even just a motorized vehicle, but like a bicycle. So their balance is like very hard and they might not like it they might get on a bike and be like no it's too scary i don't like it so why are you gonna go have somebody like that go buy thousands of dollars on a real bike when they can get one of these chinese bikes you can even buy one of these chinese bikes used but the issue with that is 
again, you don't know what issues the other person had with the bike, why they're getting rid of it and stuff like that. But again, these bikes aren't expensive. They're under $1,000 and you can do monthly payments of like $78, $80 a month, which is not bad of a deal, honestly. But yeah, this, this channel is based around beginner riders, people that are brand new to riding. They don't know if they're gonna like it or not. They wanna learn. They wanna be able to drop the bike and not be worried. If you go out and buy a $2,000 bike or even expensive, more expensive, like a newer bike, like a $5,000 bike that you know is gonna work and run, you're gonna be so scared to drop it because the second you drop it once, you're just gonna be like, dang, I just dropped my expensive ass bike. And you could break something on it. And parts for those bikes are a little bit more expensive than these Chinese bikes. Now, I don't think I could go over here, but I'm gonna go on the dock for a little bit just to talk to guys. Um, hopefully I don't fall in the water. If I do, that'll be mad embarrassing. If I don't, it'll be a nice shot. No one's out here just because it's winter. <laughs> but man, it's nice out here. The people at Thames are probably gonna report me. Call the cops on me, get the cops called on me, and that's gonna suck. So, now that it's quiet, we're out in the wild. Well, not in the wild, but <laughs> by the water, and it's peaceful. I can kind of break it down to you guys and tell you guys why even more why I buy these cheap Chinese bikes. Now, I don't want to say cheap because um, they do the work. They're actually a lot of fun to ride. But if you compare it to like a real bike, I understand where you're coming from. It, it, it is more of a hassle. It does have more problems. It does break quicker. It does um, not have the power that a real bike has. Like if, for instance, this is a 125. If I get a 125 two-stroke, it's going to be insanely a huge difference between this and the two-stroke uh, KTM. It's just the price, you guys. And plus, I'm building this channel around what I like to do. So far right now, I, I'm a beginner rider. So I'm going to reach out to the beginner riders out there. I'm going to cover uh, a lot of these Chinese bikes, as much of them as I can. So that way I can give you guys my honest opinion. So on my channel, you'll have reviews, you have speed tests, you'll have 10 things we love about each bike, 10 things we hate about bikes. We've bought, I think, five maybe five to six bikes Chinese bikes that we've tested and played with on the channel so if you guys do want to see which one will be best for you for any beginner rider out there go watch some of those videos but for now I mean this this is the next bike we're covering is the Peace Moto um, I think it's the XB87 or something like that I'm not too sure don't quote me on that but the Peace Moto bike is the next bike we're covering here on the channel so so far I do love the bike. I do like it. It rides good just like every single bike when I first ride it. But the more we ride it, the more we start to see problems with it. And that's what we're doing on this channel is we're riding these bikes and we're, we're, we're learning as well as reviewing the bikes for ourselves. Now, I'm not going to come on this channel and be a professional rider reviewing cheap Chinese bikes because I'm going to know what not to do and what to do. But the thing is, is being a beginner rider riding this bike, it puts you guys in the same situation. Like it's more relatable because... I'm going to stall out a lot of times. I'm going to mess up and miss a gear or, or something. Something random with this bike where something that a beginner biker will do. I'm going to drop the bike and stuff. So I'll be able to review the bike and see how durable it is, how long it lasts, how nice of a bike it is and stuff like that. So I'm going to give you guys the best reviews that I can on the channel. And that's, that's the reason I get these cheap Chinese bikes. And I keep saying cheap Chinese bikes because, I mean, one, price-wise it's cheap. Two, it's cheap because the parts apparently break quicker than real bikes. And three... It is a Chinese bike. I don't even know. Honestly, I don't even know if these were made in China. I don't know why they have that reputation as Chinese bikes, but that's what it has. But for the price, you're getting what you're paying for it. So, I mean, it gets the job done. If you're a beginner rider and you want to ride, you want to learn how to wheelie, and you don't want to go dropping a $5,000 bike, you can just get this for like $700, $600, and you can beat it up. You can do whatever you want with it. You can drop it as many times as you want. Um, you can learn how to be a mechanic on bikes because you can break a lot of things on it and then you can fix it because you know the issues you're learning as you go and i think that's the good way to go with these bikes because if you're learning as you go you're going to have more knowledge if you get a bike and you try to step it up i mean it's not i'm not saying it's wrong to go get a ktm for the first bike ever because don't get me wrong if you have the money go for it i mean one you're gonna love the power you're gonna you're gonna love that bike just as much as somebody like me loving this bike now the thing is is when i do get a ktm these bikes, these Chinese bikes, like right now, for, these Chinese bikes are going to just, they're going to feel slow. They're going to feel boring. They're going to feel not as reliable. And that's the thing is, 
I don't want to jump onto that bandwagon yet of having a real bike until I get better at riding because then I won't give you guys honest opinions and honest reviews on these bikes for beginner riders. This channel is based around being a beginner rider. So for instance, like right now, this is one down for first gear, half a click up is neutral, second, third, and fourth are all up. But for a beginner rider like me, sometimes I struggle finding neutral. See, like right now, I'm not in neutral. So I'll click it down, put it in first gear, make sure it's in first. Then I'll try to half click up to get it in neutral. And sometimes it doesn't work. And that's the thing is like, when it comes to riding for the first time, you're gonna have these issues. I think we're in neutral. Yeah, we're in neutral now. So, so with that being said, if you guys can, I know a lot of people are still gonna comment. I don't usually reply to those comments. I don't usually pay them any attention, but I wanted to let you guys know so that way, those of you that are actually curious about it, you know the reasons why I don't get an actual bike yet. I'm going to eventually. Don't get me wrong, it's just, it's about the right time. So next season I will for sure. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with these Chinese bikes. I'm gonna keep reviewing these Chinese bikes for the beginner riders out there. Um, and then eventually we'll, we'll upgrade. We'll, we'll start to learn things. We'll start to learn how to, we'll learn how to hold wheelies better and stuff like that. I mean, when I first started riding, I can only wheelie in first, not even wheelie. I can only pop it up in first gear. When I first learned how to ride, I would actually, if you guys go to earlier videos on the channel, you'll see that the way I did wheelies was in first gear not moving at all. And if you're an actual rider, you know that that's a lot harder to hold a wheelie like that. I mean, yes, it's easier to pop because first gear has all that torque. And when you're not moving, it just pops up. But the thing is, is now that I'm getting better at riding, I can pop it in second gear. That's first gear. As you see, I'm gunning the gas and I'm not being able to hold it up because there's not enough power in first gear to hold it up. But now that we're in second, we can ride and we can hold it up a little bit better. Now the next step that I'm working on is getting it back far enough to the point where I'm not, I'm not relying on chasing the wheelie down. I'm not relying on constantly gassing it up to make sure that the front tire doesn't drop. I need to get back far enough to the point where I hit that balance point, to the point where it, it feels comfortable. And that's what I'm gonna do in the next video for you guys later on in the week. We're gonna, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna practice wheelies for like an hour, two hours, just constantly recording it and showing you guys my progress and like rear brake control and all that stuff. But this bike, I love this bike. The Peace Moto, honestly, is a lot of fun doing wheelies on. That lady looked at me kind of weird. But yeah, it's all about learning. And I, 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 I'm sorry this video is shorter. I just had to address some of the comments about, I'm not gonna say who exactly commented, but there are people and you know who you are. comment on my videos talking about go buy a real bike stop buying these Chinese bikes with all the money you spent on Chinese bikes you could have got a real bike I understand but it's not like I can't go sell these bikes and use that money use that what $500 each bike I sell use that to put into my new next bike plus I probably won't even do that I'll probably keep these Chinese bikes and let my friends ride it and stuff like that these are kind of like beginner bikes so if I have friends over and stuff that want to go ride, I have these bikes for them so they can ride it and they can use it and have fun with it. So, so I'm actually glad that I did this. I'm not, I'm not disappointed or regretting any decision that I made. This bike is sexy. It's, it, I love it. I have the Peace Moto. We have the Teo Teo 140. We have the Apollo 007, the Apollo RFZ. We had the Apollo 250, but we sold that because that bike was trash. Pretty expensive for the price which compared to a real bike is not expensive, but it was like a thousand, like 400, maybe a thousand, 300. And the bike wasn't anywhere as good as these bikes. So these 125s are the way to go. The 250 is not the way to go. 
um, just because it's so heavy and big and bulky that it's not fun to ride. These are just little pit bikes that are fun, enjoyable. You can hit trails. You can learn how to ride on them and stuff like that. But guys, with that being said, I'm ending the video there. Stay tuned for next week because we're going to be recording me and my progress of learning a wheelie. So hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.